The Champlain Towers South Condominium in Surfside, Florida was one of the jewels of Miami Beach. It had million dollar views of the ocean, million dollar views of the pool, and million dollar condos in there that were just decked to the nines, folks. So the question is, is why did it collapse? Let's figure it out. We have all the answers for you. So here you can see it's in Miami. It's just north of Miami Beach. And we're zooming in and then there's our flyover of what the complex looked like there before it collapsed. So this is from Google Earth. And you can see just how far it is from the beach. It's actually several hundred feet from the beach. Okay, so I just wanna zoom in on the complex of how it looked before and just pay attention here to this pool deck area. And here's the main driveway. Now this pool deck area and on the driveway and the port crochet and all of that, these are all on the ground level. And there was a 120 space parking garage beneath them. And so here is the part of the pool deck that collapsed when the building collapsed, okay? So this is the hotel next door. This is the pool where the tourists that shot this video I'm about to show you, they shot it from across the street here about seven minutes before the building collapsed. Okay, now looking down at, at the buildings here, here's the building that collapsed. And don't pay attention to this because this is old photography here. There's actually a brand new, very nice looking oval shaped blue glass condo there right now. And then here's where the cars drive in right off the street and park in this little bit smaller parking lot that we showed you. There's about 18 to 20 spaces here. I'm going to zoom in slightly because this is the hotel next to it. Here is the Champlain Towers East, but, and then right here is the Champlain Towers North. So as we zoom into it, you can see it's basically built the same way with the same floor plan. And the residents in here have mostly decided to stay put because engineers have already inspected it and given it the all clear that nothing happened there. There's no damage at the bottom of their columns or anything. Look at this incredible postcard view. This is why people flocked to this building. Let's form the timeline starting 36 hours before the collapse. So what you're looking at right here, folks, is 36 hours before the condo collapsed. And what happened was a pool contractor came in to take pictures to give a quote for the pool project that they were going to work on as part of the whole entire 40 year recertification and engineering of the entire complex. So while he's in there, he goes and looks in the pool equipment room we will show you where it is on the property map in a second. But I want you to take a look at what he found in there that really made him concerned. So these pictures he turned over to the Miami Herald. So these pictures, courtesy of the Miami Herald. And what he saw, there's a couple of things here. So here's the room. Here's two different pictures that he shot. And let's take a look right up here in this upper left-hand corner. Look what we see here. See, we have spalling of the concrete. And right here where you see me moving the cursor, see those dark lines there? That is the rebar. And the rebar has obviously rusted and exposed and expanded because it had been wet at some point in time, most likely. And what happens is when rebar gets rusty, it expands or tries to expand to several times its own width. And when this happens, the concrete has nowhere to go. So it just shatters, breaks, chunks of it come flying off. And it's because of those forces of the expansion of the rusty rebar are greater than the concrete's ability to remain intact and not shear. So that must be some pretty incredible forces there. So we call that spalling. And you see it happened here, and it looks like it happened a little bit further down the on this beam. Follow here, see the cursor where I'm moving the cursor on this angled pipe right here. He then went over to buy this pipe, and here it is right here, turned around and took a picture looking back this way. And so this right here is that same spalling that we were seeing over here, but now we're seeing that uh, that second section of it, the back side of it. So as you can see, folks, there was quite a bit of it there exposed. And that should have anybody alarmed if this is any type of major concrete beam. I'm not certain that this could have had anything to do with the cause of the failure of the whole complex there because this is too far away from where the building fell so let's go take a look but before we do that take a look at the floor look at all the water all over the floor this should not be folks this absolutely should not be all over the floor there like that and that's just a lot of water and then same here at the beginning of it on the other end where the the motor is see chlorine would be really bad because the concrete would soak that up and it would get to the rebar and rust out the rebar and then you would have spalling 
So any of you that have a pool, you already recognize this. This is a standard pool pump, and this is the pool filter. So I don't know if these guys are leaking, and if they are, are they leaking chlorine water onto the slab here in this room? Again, I don't see any major issues there. It should be bone dry in there. It should not be a drop of water. I mean, that's every pool owner's worst nightmare. And same with over here, right? And then here's something else that kind of caught my eye that I don't like. I don't like the fact this these motors here are sitting on top of like, I don't know if those are bricks or if it's wood on top of bricks. Here, it looks like the backside view of the, the pool pump. It looks like the pump is either sitting on a brick or a piece of wood on top of a cinder block. And that to me is just not right. That is very unprofessional. It should either be mounted on a pad or possibly raised up off the floor on one of those aluminum RTU brackets. You know, those are those stands that they put on the roofs to elevate the ACs off the roof. Now, just outside the pool equipment room inside the garage, the pool contractor said that he noticed some water puddling on the floor there around space number 78, but he failed to get any pictures of it because it wasn't part of his task. I bet he's kicking himself for that now. But note where the water is. It's right at the bottom of the entrance ramp into the garage from the street. Pay attention because coming up, we will see whether this came into play or not as part of the collapse. I got this photo from the Miami Condo Investments website. They had a pretty good shot of the pool. So the arrow here points to where that pool equipment room is down below. Remember, we are at ground level at grade, and it is down below grade in the garage level, one story below. The equipment room is in that narrow space there between the pool and the wall. And here is another angle of the pool here. This is the architect's original 1979 plan for the Champlain Towers condominium. So there you can see the close-up of it down on the garage. Now I suspect that that wall that we are looking at here in the photo on the left, I believe that is the wall of the pool itself. So there's water on the other side of that wall. So now that we have the pool theory out of the way, let's take a look at that video that surfaced yesterday on the news all over the place from the tourists that were staying in the hotel directly across the street on 88th Street. Now it's around 1 a.m. in the morning and in this blue hotel across the street from the collapsed condo, which is right here, a couple is swimming in this pool at about one o'clock in the morning and they hear noises coming out of the building here. So they get out of the pool and they start shooting across from the pool at the noises and this is the entrance into the garage. So here we are about seven minutes before the building is about to collapse. And she zooms in here and you can see something that's very disturbing in there. And we'll zoom in on it a little closer for you. Let's show you what's going on here. Okay, so now I've slowed it down for you and enhanced the video as best I could. And what we're looking at here, this is the gate on the ramp that leads down below grade into the garage. So what you're seeing is a water pipe hanging down that's just gushing huge amounts of water. But look all over the ramp, you're seeing huge chunks of concrete, that's what it looks like, that may have fallen off of the ceiling or other columns. So what you were looking at right there, folks, is the collapsed pool deck that came down on top of the garage and it ripped down probably the sprinkler pipe. But take a closer look at the tourist photo here. Take a look at this right here hanging off the ceiling. So that is either a broken beam or it is a broken soffit. Now a soffit wouldn't be as bad because it's just, you know, fake wood hanging down. But if that's a beam, then that could spell disaster. So this is the outside of the garage entrance during better times when the building was still standing. And you can see whatever that beam is goes completely across. So the pool deck collapsed about 10 minutes ago and we know that this timeline is correct because check this out. Now CNN and several of the local news stations had reported that two different residents had reported seeing the pool deck collapse before anything happened, including this lady here, mother and daughter. So they were in their units and they heard some noise and she saw a cracking develop in her walls and ran out to inform the security desk and then came back and got her kids and that's when she saw the garage collapse. So her and her kids escaped from their first floor condo. They ran out onto Collins Avenue and ran four blocks up the road before stopping. 
Okay, so the other day, our local ABC news station, Local 10, did a story here about this woman. She's a beautiful 40-year-old Cassandra Stratton. She's an actress and a Pilates instructor. So she was on the phone with this man, her husband. He was up in Washington, D.C., and somewhere around 1.30, she's feeling the building trembling. So at about 1.30, according to him, his wife was standing on the balcony of the apartment on the fourth floor there, overlooking the Atlantic Ocean, and she looks out the side window and sees that the pool just cratered the pool deck now she thought that there was a sinkhole that's what she said to him and as she was describing it to him the phone went dead and he never heard from her again okay now let's take a look at that famous security camera footage of the condo collapse so if you look at this condo building right next to the champlain towers here on collins avenue this is called 87 park and back in the far southeast corner of the pool area they have a security camera and it was aimed directly towards the northeast right at the champlain towers and captured everything now as you can see the collapse of the champlain condo towers here in surfside was over in about 15 seconds. So now we're going to enhance the video and take a look at it and analyze it. Here I enhanced the video, now let's look at it in slow motion. And a lot of commentators have gotten this wrong. A lot of them have said the center part of the building collapsed in two sections, but if we're going to show you here, it actually dropped in three sections. So here's our first pass through it. And now that that middle section is gone, you're going to see the east side, the ocean front apartments are now going to collapse because they now lack their support columns. All right, so I have now enhanced the video and let's take a look at it. Now first, I just wanna show you what's happening as the structure collapses because now I have full control over all of the frames there. Now, if you notice something here and let me bring it back up, Look what it's doing to this part of the right tower. So a lot of the news people and other commentators got it wrong. Everybody's showing you the three parts of the building that fell down. They're all saying this fell down, then the part behind it fell down, and then this, but that's not true. Pay special attention to here, right up to these two white stripes, because you can see that as the building's starting to fall, look what it's already doing. It's sagging all of these upper floors here on the, this is the part that faces the ocean. And so the lady that, that was on the phone with her husband that saw the deck collapse was right here on the fourth floor, right around here. All right, right where the arrow is. So as it's coming down, watch how it's shearing the whole left half of that right side tower. See that? Boom. Now it's so skinny. And now you're going to see that's why it collapses a few seconds later where it just can't take the load. And watch what the building does as it comes down. You're going to see it, it's leaning a little towards us and a little towards the left. And as it starts to pancake down, you can see it doesn't quite come down exactly straight down. It's falling a little to the left. And so a lot of the debris is gonna come down and splash all over the first part of the pool deck. Okay, now, as I said before, let's take a look. I'm gonna rewind it back up. Remember I said, follow these, keep your eye on these two white lines. And I wanna show you where that is on the building because watch, it's gonna disappear. Okay, so that's it right there. Let's go take a look at the photo I have of the building here. And these are those two white stripes I just told you about, right? They got annihilated. So it got ripped right down the building, right down this line here. So everything from here over is all that was left, just a really skinny part. It looked like a giant candy bar just sticking up in the sky there. So just this whole part was left. This whole midsection dragged all of this. It tore all of this off of the building. And this is, I believe, a shearing wall, and that's why it came off so clean. So it started right here in the middle of this one, which just happens to be right above the pool deck. Here's a bird's eye view the next morning of the pool deck, how it collapsed. And we're going to come back to this in a second, but I just wanted to point out, look, there's still water in the pool. The water's beautiful. No debris even apparently landed in the pool at all. So it was still in pretty good shape, but everything around it collapsed. 
Okay, so here we are on the pool deck looking from the southern wall. So this was supplied by the Miami-Dade Fire Department. The pool would be off to the right over here, just to the right of where these chairs and tables are. Now, let me point out something interesting. We're looking directly north at the rubble pile as it tumbled down onto just before the pool deck. So I guess the edge of the building would have been right back here, where, probably where this fireman is standing. Now, look at something interesting here. See, pictures can tell you a lot of information here. You see these columns here? You see this number 42 here? You see this number 72 and number 73? This is down in the garage. So the plaza, the whole pool deck here, was supposed to be up here on top of these pilings. And this deck here where these cars are parked, these six cars here, are supposed to be up here right where the white meets the brown. So they are now, this looks like about five or six feet down into the garage. Why didn't it fall all the way? Because these are sitting on top of cars right now. And in fact, you can see the bumps here that were sitting on top of cars. This just goes to show you. So this is space number 42. This is space number 72 and space number 73. Let's go take a look at them. So let's go back to our garage view. Remember I showed you 42 right here? That was the column we were just looking at. And then I showed you 72 and 73. It was this column right here that we were looking at. So it appears that all of this had collapsed right in this area here. We don't know the extent of it, but we do know it left piles of debris on the bottom of the ramp. Here's the ramp. Remember that entrance ramp? We showed you the video looking straight down the ramp, and we saw the pile of debris at the bottom here of the ramp. So we know for a fact then that the pool deck collapse took in all the way up, probably around in this area here, I'm gonna estimate, right in this area, all of this collapsed. Okay, and now here is some other really good crucial evidence. This was taken by Getty Images, and I, I'm assuming this was the next morning. But take a look, folks, here. Here's a great bird's eye view of the actual collapse of the pool deck. The pool is still intact right here, and you can see the shape of where the collapse was all the way up into here and into here ventures over into here and i think the break happened right here here's where you drive in off the street these cars are still at street level all of these cars here looks like between six and eight cars they tumbled down into the garage right below them and that white stripe right there is the top of what should have been the garage because down in the garage the posts are all painted white okay so here here's the general cut right here it goes right along here and I'm willing to bet it's all the way around in this area here. Here's the entrance to the garage. This is the ramp. is probably like right right around over here. The, the ramp ends at the 50% mark of the property, which would be right here. See? So the ramp ends like right around here. And the bottom of the ramp here is where initially we saw that video that had all of the stuff on the bottom of the floor there that was coming off the ceiling too. And then the broken pipe was there. So where is this located? Well, we know that this is spaces 72 and 73 right here. See, remember, 72 and 73, those are those two spaces right there. And remember, folks, right over here is space 78, where the pool contractor the other day saw all of that water pooled up right around here, and we still don't know why. But isn't it a coincidence that it happens to be all in this general area where the, the pool deck collapsed? So another thing too, you can see how this picture verifies what I said. This is the part of the building, that last part to fall that was facing the ocean. And remember I said it was leaning towards us, towards the security camera, which was way back over here. And it fell slightly over to the left. There's your layers. And this is why I've been telling people, I don't think they're going to find any more survivors because this is the roof here. Let's assume this was 12, you know, the roof and then 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, so the lady who was supposedly out on her patio talking to her husband when she said she saw the pool deck collapse over here and she saw the, what she thought was a sinkhole, she forgot the garage was underneath there. So that's how that happened. But you can see how it almost looks like a package of bacon. Whenever you get a pancake building that collapses, it's just devastating. There really aren't many voids in there. Here is video of the sunken pool deck. And if you look on the right, you'll see the space. They're looking right into the garage where it has sunk down to that level now. Now, what's interesting is look at the back wall. I mean, it sheared right off of that wall. Whatever happened here, whatever weight or whatever failure mode occurred here, it took the entire pool deck down here vertically. And what I am still struggling with is the, the size of these columns here. 
And what really bothers me, folks, here is how the pool deck at every one of these columns, it just sheared itself right down the column. These support columns are supposed to do just that, support. So why did it happen? Why did the concrete just strip itself from all of these strands of rebar that you can see on every one of these clean? I, I mean, I don't even see a chunk of concrete. It's as if the concrete was so maybe wet or God knows what happened to it, that it couldn't even hang on to the rebar, but it just seemed every one of these failed in the exact same way. This right here is the hut tub, and you can see why the pool is still intact. This thing is built for it tough. It's got good, thick, solid concrete all the way around it, so it, it hung in there. I believe there was a car right here. Um, yeah, so what else can we tell by this here? And so, you know, the rubble pile actually stopped short of the deck. So uh, some people might be inclined to think, well, maybe the building fell and that caused the deck to collapse. No, the deck collapsed first. We have multiple witnesses and we've already shown you that. Now, here's something interesting. Look at all the air conditioners. You notice how they're barely even damaged at all? Because this is the roof. They were on the roof and they just rode it down. So if some people had been on the roof, I'm willing to bet they would have survived this because it doesn't fall down at the speed of gravity. It pancakes it. You drop maybe 10 feet to the floor below you and then it slowly, one floor at a time, you know, does it over several seconds. And the other thing too, you're probably wondering why is this wavy? Because it's sitting on top of the cars below. The entire garage is all the way here and all the way under the around the other side of the pool, all completely underneath this entire area here. And so there's a car there. You can see all of these bumps where it's sitting over the tops of cars. Okay, now looking at this picture, I wanted to point out something else to you. All of these little things keep catching my eye. Look at the size of the columns here on this building that's still standing. This is the tower that's still there. Look at the other columns over here. They look a lot skinnier, folks, and I'm questioning why. Why would these columns be bigger than all the other ones? It just certainly this caught my eye, and this could be one of the reasons why this building is still standing when the other ones failed. Because look, this building is practically on top of where the pool deck collapsed. This entire area collapsed. This building is still standing. Looking just to the left of this, you can see directly into the garage down below where it collapsed, but yet the building above it is still standing just perfectly with the big columns. This shows it even better. Look at the size of all of these columns right here and the tower that survived. See, nice and beefy and meaty. And yet these guys get these little skinny toothpicks. Just like the FIU pedestrian bridge here in Miami that collapsed a few years ago. If you look over here on the right, why is diagonal member 11 right here skinny while the member on the other end of it is nice and thick. See how these others are all nice and thick? But yet this one suddenly got skinny on us and the failure occurred right here. See, even when you look in the plans for the garage, all of these columns over here on the lower left belong to the tower that's still standing and even right here. Why are these so much bigger and thicker than all of these support columns here on the other tower? So that one really gives me pause, folks, and I'm wondering if that's not a, a mistake. You know, I'm not going to rush to judgment on this, but I'm just wondering, whenever I've seen collapses that I've studied in the past, I see this kind of thing, and I always wonder, why was that member skinnier than the other one? Okay, now, now let's see which of the columns failed first. So as you can tell, the whole center part of the building starts to fall first so it's this whole part everything from the sheer wall right here all the way over to this building and including probably two of the columns here because you got to take into account this part fell and then over here on either side of those white stripes that collapsed as well see it just ripped it right off of that building so let's see which of those columns it is all right so as we look at the floor plan here this is the sheer wall this is that center part that everybody says collapsed first, and I agree that this is the part that collapsed first. It also, as I showed you in the picture, took out this column here and probably some of this. So this part of the building, the right-hand side of the building, got sheared right here. And then, so we have these five posts. So we have these five columns. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so looking back at the overview of the entire building in the plaza, remember it's one, two, three, four, five. It's those columns that gave way first. And if you overlay the garage floor plan on top of this, you can see which ones it appears to be. It appears to be one, two, three, four, 
5. And do you notice how it just so happens to include our good friend parking space number 78? Do you remember we were talking about that twice already? So here I've drawn my red ellipse here around what I think are the first columns to collapse. And I gotta tell you folks, as an engineer, you know, I've always pointed out to you, everything has to jive from all different angles. And we've looked at the timing, we've looked at, at the witness accounts and everything. And even the pool contractor that said this is where he saw that pool of water. So there must have already been something going on here in this area, leaking from the ceiling. And as we saw from the tourist video that we're shooting down this way, this is where we saw the pile of everything. So this is where it all started right here. And once these five critical columns go, and then the building above it starts to collapse, that's it, it's all over. Okay, so let me show you here on the video where I think all of the other people got it wrong and, and why. And I wish they had given us more video from the start. This isn't really at the start. This was somebody hand holding their cell phone after it already started in front of the security screen. So watch that first section in the middle. So there it goes, right? Taking down the right section with it. But you see how it's leaving up here, this section behind it? So we know that all of the building didn't just collapse at once, even though a lot of the conspiracy theory people are coming in here telling me, oh, that was a timed explosion, it was a controlled implosion, and it was done on purpose, and blah, blah, blah. No, so it came down first. Then here you can see the second part of it is starting to drop, right? But wait, there's more because after it drops, you see that dark shadow up top here? You're gonna see something forming here and it's going to be the third part that drops right there. Do you see that? You see this part right here? This has not yet dropped. So that looks like the far north wall of the condo that see how it's still standing there? And you can see it still has a light there on. So it's amazing that the electricity is even still working at that point. And so there it goes. And then right now, boom, you can start to see that third section drop. So everybody got it wrong. All of the people that showed it breaking off in, in basically this section and then the back section and then this section. It wasn't three sections, it was really four sections that it failed in. So these guys here from Architects Journal, I think had the most accurate drawing of what collapsed first. Although I still think that this yellow section here and this red all collapsed at once because I believe all of these columns gave away. And then second would be this because it started to tear at this. And then third would be back here. And then fourth would be this section here that I just showed you a minute ago. And then last would be right over here, that skinny part of the tower that was left. So these guys were the most accurate so far. Okay, so how did it fail? Well, this is that famous engineering report from 2018, where Morabito Consultants, who we used some of their floor plans here in this video, prepared this report. They walked the property, they found things they didn't like, like they said all of the windows need to be replaced because numerous residents are reporting leaking. That's not gonna cause a problem. They found cracks like you see here on some of the patios and spalling. And again, that's not gonna tear down your building, but they did say these do have to be repaired. And that was actually being worked on already as part of their 40 year recertification plan. They were getting ready to start it. They were already doing stuff up on the roof. This is what I think here is leading to the root cause of our problem here. So he's talking about the whole pool deck entrance here and the waterproofing. If you look right here, he says the failed waterproofing is causing major structural damage to the concrete structural slab below these areas. Failure to replace the waterproofing in the near future will cause the extent of the concrete deterioration to expand exponentially. That is the key word right there, folks, exponentially from 2018. Here we are three years later and it has already expanded exponentially because they never got around to fixing it. And so they, they listed all of the stuff that's got to be done here. They also said th there was a major error in the design by the architects originally. The reinforced concrete slab, which is underneath the deck there, it is not sloped to drain. The water sits on the waterproofing until it evaporates. This is a major error in the development of the original contract documents. Here's something else that makes me suspicious. Here's uh, before the building collapsed. This is, I got this from the MLS system for apartment rental on the building. But look at all the water that's pooled up here on the deck on a day where it's not raining and the rest of the deck isn't exactly wet either. Why are there these random collections of water here? And what that says to me is that the liner underneath, because the concrete substrate underneath all of these bricks is flat and not sloped to get rid of the water, 
I think the water collects up in between the cracks of all of these pavers whenever it rains, and it just sits there until it can dry. And that would add a lot of weight onto this pool deck. See, as part of the design, the, the engineering company wanted to add sloping all over the place there on that deck. That would help drain the water better. So my theory is that we had a lot of water intrusion on the pool deck that eventually got down to the non-sloped concrete reinforcement structure below, which eventually soaked up water and got the rebar all rusty and caused spalling all over the place. And eventually it caused the collapse of the pool deck, which pulled down five columns with it and caused the collapse of the entire building. We will show you more engineering diagrams on the next video, so make sure you watch these other two videos here that we've already uploaded on it, and we'll see you on the next one.